Hello, and welcome to part two of our demonic Halloween scene tutorial. We left off in part one with what you see on screen. Now we need to add our ring light to Van Helsing 9. Since we have fog effects and the crawling void lurker is pretty close to our hero, I'm going to use a spotlight to provide our rim light to the scene. So we'll start by changing this from eye ring to texture shaded, so we're not dealing with all that render data. Then we'll go up to create and select new spotlight. Here's your dialog box. You can name it whatever you like. I'm just going to leave it as it is, along with the default settings, and you can just click accept. You can see in your scene tab, you have a new spotlight in your scene. Now we need to find out where it is. So in your viewport, change from camera and go to perspective and click Control F. That will bring you directly to where your spotlight is. Uh, at this point, you can now zoom out. And let's move it to where it needs to go. We're going to be adding a rim light to the left side of our character. So let's move it over here. All right, once you have it in the rough location, you can change your view again in the viewport. And this time you're going to select the spotlight right here. Not exactly the look we're going for. So now we need to actually direct where the spotlight is going to be pointed. So let's bring it up above the ground plane, look over to our right, and there's Van Helsing right there. So with your spotlight now aimed at your subject, you will start modifying the spotlight parameters. So we have spotlight selected in our scene tab right here, and we click on the parameter tab and on spotlight, and here's all the parameters that you can now use on that spotlight. For what I'm doing today with creating a ribbon light, I'm going to increase my intensity from 100 up to 200. I'm going to increase my luminous flux from 1500 to 10,000. And I'm going to change my temperature from 6500 to 1500. You can also play with other options like your spread angle and your beam exponent. Like I am doing right now, my spread angle, I'm going to put down to 20, and my beam exponent, I'm going to put at 35. And now I'm just going to line up to where I like the rim light to hit. Oh, there's good. And now we can go back to our camera, go back to iRing, and see how we did. And through the magic of editing, we can now see what our rim light is doing to our character. It's lighting up her left side on her arm, down through her legs, as well as on her head, and it even hit the back arm here a little bit on the sword, so that's great. Using NVIDIA iRay uh, in your viewport here gives you a preview and make sure you like how uh, lighting and, and everything is working in your actual scene guide and do a full render. It's a really good tool to be using to just spot your check your work as you go. I like how it is right now, so I'm just going to leave it. So the last item for this tutorial is our secret trick for dark scenes. So as you can see right now, this is still quite dark. This is how I really want to have it. But right now, the sword is sort of getting lost with that wall. It's, it's the same kind of texture and glow, uh, and it's not very visible to the eye immediately. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take our hero's sword, and I'm going to make the sword, at least the sword blade, luminescent. So let's change this back to texture shaded. I'm going to select the sword. Go to our surfaces pane, select the sword blade, and down at the emission color, we're going to turn it on by selecting it and changing it from black to white. As soon as I do that, all these other options are kind of going to come up, such as emission temperature, luminance, and luminous efficacy. So those are the main things that I need to change. The first thing I've changed is the emission temperature down to 1500 so we have the same orange glow that everything else is putting off the luminance we need to bring that all the way down to 10 because we didn't want this thing to look like a lightsaber it's still a sword we just want it to look like it's reflecting the glow 
from the fire is in front of uh, that hell zone. And we're also going to reduce the luminous efficacy down to 5. So let's see how that looks. So after a quick time lapse here, we can now see that the sword is coming out a bit more orange. It's not getting off glowing effects, it's really just highlighting the sword and it's much more visible to the viewer's eye. So since we're happy with that, we'll throw this back into texture shaded so we're not spending too much resources on our PC and our GPU and let's do a full render. All right, so that wraps up our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the image that we produced here today and I hope you have fun creating.